Now we're going to go over question number 10. Uh, basically, it's a combination of a very, very small part geometry, and then maybe most of it we can call it a uh, number theory, and maybe again a little bit of combinatorics. Uh, now, the question says consider this square, 2 by 2 square. How many rectangles? Now, when we say rectangles, you can also consider squares as a rectangle because squares are a special type of rectangles. Now, this is an example. So the question says, if as an example, you have a two by two grid, you can count this, you can also count this, but you cannot count this as another the rectangle because this and this are the same. And the last one is just the whole rectangle. So if a two by two grid is given, we know we can count three different rectangles. Now the question says n by m rectangle. Actually this is not what the question says. I'm changing it a little bit and then ask the original question. So think of if you have a n, m by m grid, how many rectangles are you going to have there? How many different values of n and m gives us 100 non-congruent uh, rectangles? As an example, a 22 by say 15 grid may give us 100 different uh, rectangles. As an example, say 35 by, and these are just some random numbers, 35 by 16 may again give us 100 uh, rectangles. It says find all the rectangles that give you 100 non congruent rectangles. But basically, what we have to do is we're going to start from a simple rectangle and see how many different non-congruent rectangles we can count and then find a general equation and then see how we're going to solve it. So as an example, if I have a, let's start with a very, very simple one, uh, five by one, one, two, three, four, and five. For a n by one grid, we can count n non-congruent rectangles. So that's easy. Let's just write it. I know if I have n by one, that gives me n different rectangles. Now let's see what happens if you have n by two. So when you have n by two, it's easy. The first one is just the first row. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's just grab this. One, two, three, four, and then five. Now, if you want to count the second row, the first thing you can count is this one, which basically is the repetition of this one. So we don't count this. For the second row, we're gonna start from this thing, which is two by two, and then make it two by three, and then go on. Now, what happens if we add another row on top of this one? Again, if you count this, the first column as a rectangle, that won't count because we have it already here. So you have to start from a three by three uh, square. So basically, the idea is, if you have an n by m, and the question says n is greater than m, we have to break this down into 1 by n, and then 2 by n, 3 by n, and then m by n, and then see how many rectangles this will have. This gives us m. This, if you have 2 by n, how many rectangles does it give us? It gives us n, which is 1 by n, so the first row. Now, when you want to think of the second row, the second row does not exactly give us the same number of rectangles as the first row, because as I said, this should be uh, deleted. So that gives me 1 less than the previous row. Now, when you want to go with the third row, I have the previous squares, so let's just write them, n plus, n minus 1, plus. Now, when you want to count the number of rectangles in the third row, what you have to do, you don't have this and you don't have this. 
So you have to subtract the first row by two or the second row by one. So what this becomes is n minus two. And this just goes on and on. If you follow this approach, then the question becomes much easier. So right now, what we have to do is we have to see if we add all these numbers, then how can we solve the summation to be 100? Because the question says we want to exactly have 100 non-congruent rectangles. n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus, so this is the number of rectangles in the first row, the number in the rectangles when you also consider the second row, the number of rectangles when you also consider the third row, and the number of the rectangles when you consider the mth row. So this is what we have, and this is, say, 100. So basically, this is a series. Now, how many ends do we have? So let's just call this the another term. So term number one, term number two, term number three. So as you see, we have m different terms. All of them contain m. So if you add all these m brackets, you're going to have m times n plus some other thing. What are those things? Negative 1 plus negative 2 plus negative 3 all the way up to m minus 1 because all of them are negative. I do minus and you know 1 plus 2 all the way up to m minus 1 is m m minus 1 divided by 2. So basically that's the whole idea of how to solve this question and then we have to make this now keep that in mind that question says n must be more than m. We're gonna we are able to get some solutions which m is more than n. We have to ignore them. So we want to solve this. Now what I will do, I'll try to find n. So I try to keep n on one side, move all other variables to the other side, rearrange it, and then see how can I solve it. Now let's do this, you're going to get m times n is 100 plus m, m minus 1 divided by 2. Let's divide both sides by m. So this is the equation I have to solve. Now keep that in mind because when I said this is a combination of um, combinatorix and uh, number theory, it's because of this, you know, n and m are integer numbers. So if it was just algebra, this was one equation, two unknowns, you would have infinitely many solutions. But right now you have to find m and n such that all these values are integer and then satisfy this equation. Uh, so we want to solve this equation. Now, what I can do, I can cross m and m, because we know m is not zero, and this is what I have. And to solve this, I uh, consider two different cases. One is when m is odd, the other is when m is even. And that makes it much, much easier. So let's think and see why I'm doing this. Let's just think of this part. I know if m is odd, when you subtract one from odd, it becomes even. And even divided by two gives you an even number. It's divisible. So I know if I'm talking about the case if n is odd. If n is odd, this is an integer number. I also know n is an integer number. So that leaves me no choice that, uh, that 100 divided by m must be integer. There is no other way, because integer equals something plus an integer. This is definitely integer. So what I do, I somehow try to solve this to be integer, and then that's easy. m could be 1, 2, say 4, but keep that in mind, we said m is 
pumped. So although M being two or say 10 or 20 volts, we're only looking for uh, numbers so we can simply find M. As an example, one choice is M being five. I don't go over all the choices. It's so simple, you can do it. Now, this is the first case. The second case is where M is even. Now, when M is even, what happens is even minus one becomes odd. Odd divided by two gives us a remainder of half. And that's good because we know the only remainder we're going to get for this part is half. We don't have any other options. So this remainder is half. This is an integer. What we conclude, the remainder of 100 divided by m, when m is even, must also be half. Because as an example, when you divide this, you're going to get 3.5. So definitely you have to get something 0.5 here. So I'm trying to solve this at 100 divided by m, when m is even, gives me a remainder, let's do this, a remainder of half. And again, that's not really hard, because when 100 divided by m gives you a remainder of half, you can multiply this by 2. So what we know is 200 divided by m gives us no remainder, but it also must be odd. So this is a, an easy way to do this. 100 divided by m gives us a remainder of half. Therefore, 200 by m gives us an odd uh, value. And then you can easily find that. Let's see. So basically, odd is an integer number. You have to consider values of m that becomes 200 divided by m becomes an odd integer. Let's say m is 5. Now, 200 divided by 5, or 200 divided by, say, 10, or 20, but keep that in mind, m must be even. It's not working. So you have to find values of m as an example, 16, because you know 100 divided by 8, 12.5. Uh, 200 divided by 16 gives you 25, which is an odd number. And then, again, that's easy to find. So you can easily find m, and with this case you have them, with this case you have them, and this is your answer. Keep in mind that n must always be more than m. And that's question number 10. Thank you all.